Welcome to Unit 5, Video 2, Moles to Mass. By the end of this video, you should be able to determine the mass of one mole of an element or one mole of a compound. You should be able to convert between moles of an element and mass of an element. You should be able to convert between moles of a compound and mass of a compound. And you should be able to convert between moles of a gaseous element or compound and volume. So let's begin by thinking about how moles and mass are related. So do you think the masses of one mole of everything will be the same? Consider this example. If I have a mole of ants, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd ants. If I have a mole of hippos, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd hippos. But clearly, a mole of ants weighs far less than a mole of hippos. So the mass of one mole of a substance is different from the mass of one mole of a different substance. It's simple to find the mass of a mole of an element, or the mass of 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of any element. This information is right on the periodic table. So the atomic mass of an element, the number at the bottom of the box on your periodic table, when expressed in grams, is the mass of a mole of an element, or the mass of 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of that element. For instance, if you take a look at the periodic table you were given in class and find sodium, Na, you'll see that the molar mass of sodium is 22.990 grams. That means that 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sodium have a mass of 22.990 grams. Likewise for gold. If you find gold on the periodic table, you'll see that the mass of 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of gold, or one mole of gold, is 196.97 grams. Take a second and see if you can find the mass of one mole of vanadium, V, According to your periodic table, you should see that the mass of one mole of vanadium is 50.94 grams. To summarize then, here's a whole bunch of different elements, and we see that in each case, the number of atoms present in one mole is always the same, because a mole is always 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, but the mass changes, because the individual atoms in the sample have different masses. It, for instance, clearly each gold atom has a much greater mass than each boron atom, resulting in a much larger mass for the overall mole. We can use this information to help us convert between moles and mass. This is convenient because we can't measure moles directly in the lab. We can only measure mass. Consider this question. What is the mass of 2.40 moles of selenium? We know that one mole of selenium equals 78.96 grams of selenium from the periodic table. So we can use a conversion factor. Our given is 2.40 moles of selenium. And we can multiply that by the conversion factor, 78.96 grams of selenium over one mole of selenium. Our moles cancel. And we should get 190 grams of selenium. Does this answer make sense? Well, if one mole weighs seven, almost 79 grams, then 2.4 moles should definitely weigh more than that. So this is a sensible answer. Again, we followed the same procedure as before. We multiplied the known by a conversion factor to get our answer. Again, if you prefer, you can use a proportion. We can also go in the other direction. Consider this. You are asked how many moles are in 58.70 grams of silver. We know that one mole of silver has a mass of 107.87 grams. So we can multiply the given by our conversion factor, cancel our grams, and we end up with 0.5442 moles of silver. Again, we multiplied the known by a conversion factor and got our answer. Once again, notice that the unit that we wanted is on the top of our conversion factor and the unit that we have is on the bottom. 
Again, feel free to use a proportion. What if we have a compound, though, rather than an element? So far, we've only looked at samples of individual elements. We can calculate the mass of a mole of a compound, or a sample that contains atoms that are chemically bonded together. Essentially, all you need to do is find the number of atoms of each element making up the compound and add their molar masses together. This should make sense. If I take the mass of you and the mass of your right shoe and the mass of your left shoe and add them all together, I'll get the mass of you wearing your shoes. If I take the mass of a dozen of you and a dozen of your right shoe and a dozen of your left shoe and add them all together, I'll get the mass of a dozen of you in both of your shoes. If I take the mass of a mole of you and a mole of your right shoe and a mole of your left shoe and add them all together, I'll get the mass of a mole of you wearing both shoes. So take water, for example. Here we know that the mass of oxygen is 15.994 grams, and we know that each water molecule contains one oxygen atom. We know this because the formula is H2O. The molar mass of hydrogen is 1.00794 grams per mole. There's two hydrogens per water molecule, so we need that twice. Add them up and you get 18.0153 grams for every mole of water. Pause the video here and try finding the molar masses of some or all of these compounds. Be particularly careful on number five you'll see that this two indicates that we have two of that entire NO3 group. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. Now that we know how to find the molar mass of a compound or the mass of one mole of a compound, we can perform conversions just like we did with elements. If I want to know the mass of 0.35 moles of HCl, I know that one mole of HCl equals 1.01 grams for hydrogen plus 35.45 grams for chlorine. Add them together, and I know that one mole of HCl, or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd HCl molecules, weighs 36.46 grams. So I take my given, my 0.35 moles, Multiply it by my conversion factor. My moles will cancel, and I'm left with 12.76 grams of HCl. Does this answer make sense? Well, I have much less than one mole of HCl. Therefore, my mass should be much less than the molar mass of HCl. Again, we followed the same pattern. Known times conversion factor equals answer. Going in the other direction, if I want to convert from 26.20 grams of silver nitrate to moles of silver nitrate, I first figure out the molar mass of silver nitrate. Here, there's one silver atom, one nitrogen atom, and three oxygen atoms. Add these together and I get a molar mass of 169.87 grams. Therefore, one mole, or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of silver nitrate, has a mass of 169.87 grams. Again, write my given, multiply by a conversion factor, cancel our units, and you find that you have 0.1542 moles of silver nitrate. Does this make sense? Well, if one mole weighs 169 grams, we have far less than one mole's worth of silver nitrate. So this does make sense. And once again, we followed the same pattern. Here's some conversions to try on your own. Pause the video here and try these. When you come back, I'll display the answers. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. We can also convert between moles and volume when dealing with a sample of a gas. We learned a few units ago that since a gas is so spread out, since the particles of a gas are so spread out, 
one mole of any gas will occupy the same amount of space, so long as this is, they're all at the same temperature and pressure. So if we treat the standard temperature and pressure, which if you recall is 0 degrees Celsius and 273 Kelvin at a pressure of 1 atm, any sample that contains the same number of particles will occupy the same amount of space, or vice versa. Any two samples of gas occupying the same volume will contain the same number of particles. Therefore, we can assign a standard volume for one mole of gas. That volume is 22.4 liters. In other words, the volume of one mole of any gas, the volume of 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules or atoms of any gas, at 273 Kelvin and 1 atm will always be 22.4 liters. Notice here we have two balloons, one filled with helium and one filled with chlorine. Helium is a monatomic element, so it exists by itself, whereas chlorine is a diatomic element, so it exists as Cl2. In each case, if we have 22.4 liters of each and we're at 273 Kelvin and 1 atm, each one will contain 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles, either atoms or molecules. So we can use this information in our calculations as well. If we want to know the volume of 4.2 moles of ammonia gas, NH3 gas, we know that one mole of NH3 gas is 22.4 liters. Notice this could have been any gas here. As long as we're at STP, it will be 22.4 liters. So we write our given. We multiply by a conversion factor. And we find that 4.2 moles of ammonia has a volume of 94.1 liters. Again, following our same pattern. We can also go the other direction. Suppose I have 58.2 liters of argon at STP, and I want to know how many moles it contains. I know that one mole of argon gas can, uh, is equal to 22.4 liters of argon gas. So again, I write my given. I multiply by my conversion factor. I cancel my units. And I find that I have 2.60 moles of argon, which makes sense since I had more than 22.4 liters of argon to start with. And one more time, we follow our same pattern. That brings us to the end of this video. Let's review our goals. First, we learned to determine the mass of one mole of an element by looking at the periodic table, and of a compound by adding together the masses of individual elements in a compound to determine the mass of one mole of a compound. Then, we learn to convert between moles of an element and mass of an element using the molar mass from the periodic table. Then, we learn to convert between moles of a compound and mass of a compound using the molar mass calculated by combining the masses of each element. And finally, we learn to convert between moles of a gaseous element or compound and volume by using 22.4 liters per mole, which is true of any gas at STP. Also note before we end that I've used the term molar mass and atomic mass interchangeably here. That's fine. They're the same thing.